This is an 85 gigabyte ProRes 422 video file. My 2019 MacBook Pro that I traded in when I got my M1 Max MacBook Pro took 8 hours and 35 minutes to convert this to 10-bit HEVC using compressor. My 2021 M1 iMac finished same task in 6 hours and 29 minutes. The Monster Mac Pro finished in 4 hours and 43 minutes. And my wonderful totally maxed out M1 Max MacBook Pro finished in 4 hours and 34 minutes. And when it comes to the same task, this Mac Studio with M1 Ultra in it took Actually, you know what? I'd like you to take a guess. So we start from 8 hours and 30 minutes. And then we are down to 4 hours and 34 minutes with M1 Max MacBook Pro. So Mac Studio with M1 Ultra, how long did it take? Did it take 4 hours, 3 and a half hours, 3 hours? Leave a comment down below right now. You done? Drum roll, please. Tell us, tell us. Wait. I, I actually know. This machine finished the same task in 2 hours and 33 minutes. I can't, I can't, I can't, you. I would die if I saw you now. Dreams might turn into something real. Don't you give me the look, take a bow. Don't let Mac Studio's minimalist design and the lack of Pro in its name fool you. This one has the M1 Ultra SoC in it. The M1 Ultra is two M1 Max SoCs combined with Ultra Fusion, which means this new block on the block has 20 core CPU, 64 core GPU, and 128 gigabyte unified memory. At the bottom it has a beautifully designed air intake and at the front it has an STXC memory card reader and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. At the back it has a giant grill, four Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB-A ports, one HDMI port, one 10 gigabit Ethernet port and one 3.5 mm headphone jack. But wait, there is more. This is the brand new studio display that is released at the same time with Mac Studio. This 27 inch 5K LCD display has 600 nits brightness, 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, 6 speakers, 3 microphones, 3 USB C ports, and 1 Thunderbolt 3 port. You can get it with a regular stand, a height adjustable stand, or a Visa mount. You can also get the nano textured glass version, which eliminates the reflections like a boss. So yes, this machine has two N1 Max SoCs welded together with Ultra Fusion, the very M1 Max that we know and love from MacBook Pro. And I, I've been saying this a lot, but this MacBook Pro is not only the best laptop I've ever used, considering everything it does, it is the best computer I've ever used. I'm still blown away by its performance in everything it does. So. Two M1 Max SoCs welded together. What does that mean for the benchmarks? In Geekbench, Mac Studio is far ahead of anything I have here to compare it to. Even in single core results, it is in the lead. In the compute test, of course, it cannot compete with my W69000X in my Mac Pro, but as you can see, it scored far better than M1 Max MacBook Pro. In Cinebench, Mac Studio is easily in the lead, but in disk speed tests, it wasn't able to compete with my M1 Max MacBook Pro. But benchmarks barely tell the full story. What really happens when you start using this machine? Let's start with the fan. Of all the tests I did, I've been pushing this device back to back with benchmark tests, with exports, renders, anything you can imagine. And I haven't heard the fans go faster at all. You can normally hear it when you bring your ear next to it. And when you bring in an anometer next to it, you can see that a really nice breeze is coming out of it. The ventilation in this machine is fantastic. I think it leaves a lot of space for the times when we get applications that is gonna demand more power. Now let's take a look at Final Cut Pro 10. As expected, Mac Studio is really fast. From rendering a project file filled with plugins and sound effects to exporting an 8K video, it leads the max. However, when it comes to certain tests, Mac Studio performed just like M1 Max MacBook Pro. The results were so close to each other. And I think that is because 
the optimization for M1 Ultra isn't completely here yet. The same thing happened while I was reviewing M1 Max MacBook Pro. Some results weren't as good and when Apple updated those apps, when Apple updated their operating system the results change drastically and I'm guessing the same thing is going to happen with M1 Ultra. I also put a frame counter on my 8K H.265 iPhone 13 unboxing video project set to play back to better quality and when I hit play the project played back as expected. A compressed video file makes things very difficult for the computer but Mac Studio doesn't seem to care about it. Even when I skim through an unrendered compressed 8K video it performs really well. When it comes to light and Photoshop as you'd expect this machine performs fantastic. In Lightroom I use the healing brush like crazy to clean up a photo, a raw photo that I shot with Nikon Z6 that had dust in the sensor. I cleaned up the dust one by one and this machine didn't slow down at all and it kept up with me the entire time. By the way this thing has a tiny speaker on it in case you connect this to a screen like the XDR display that doesn't have a speaker on it. It has this tiny speaker and it's, it's really cute. The ports are really tight and nice and it's also really nice to have six Thunderbolt ports, two USB-A ports, the HDMI port, SD card reader and the Ethernet port. They are all really important. I've been using the Thunderbolt dock a lot with Mac Pro and MacBook Pro setup I have. I don't like the Thunderbolt dock a lot. There are a lot of things about that that isn't a seamless experience. There's a delay in the sound especially while you're editing the video. No matter what I connect no matter what cable I use, always the externals are a little slower compared to when it's directly connected to my computer. So it is really nice to have these ports on this machine. When it comes to keyboard, mouse and the trackpad, I didn't have any Bluetooth connection issues. I know that's something a lot of people were talking about when it comes to M1 Mac Mini. Also, check this out. This is the Mac Pro. This is MacBook Pro. This is the Mac Studio. These are three completely different computers and this is connected to Mac Pro. So as you can see, we have the mouse here, but with the universal control now, I can just go in here and I don't know, move this around. Let's say I want to add something. I can go to my Mac Pro's keyboard and as I'm typing, it types there, right? And then I can go back here, maybe go to my iPad and start the timer. That's okay. And then Go to Mac Studio and, oh, I think I need this file. I'm going to drag it over here and drop it. And as you can see, it starts copying it. Just when you think copy and paste from one Apple device to another was crazy. Here comes the universal control and it's fantastic. Let's talk about Studio Display. When I first saw the studio display at Apple's keynote, I wasn't sure how I felt about it because having that mini LED 120Hz ProMotion 1600 nits display on my MacBook Pro honestly changed my expectations a little bit. However, studio display is totally fine. It is a lot brighter than I expected and the blacks are darker compared to M1 iMac. As expected, the color and the resolution is great and the speakers are, I think, the best speakers on any Apple device so far. The microphone quality is really good as well. The camera quality is good. The ultra wide angle 12 megapixel camera is good compared to Mac Pro. I don't know which one to pick. This is the studio display and this is what it sounds like and this is what it looks like. I can see that we're cropped in. It is actually a lot wider than this because that's how it can follow me. On the MacBook Pro, the footage looks softened and uh, like my hair looks interesting. My beard looks interesting. On the studio display, I see a little noise because we're cropped in. So. If I was to pick one, I don't know which one I would pick. Actually, after seeing it on my monitors, picking one was very easy, barely an inconvenience. I prefer Studio Display's camera and its ability to follow me around with its center stage feature. 
This display has the nano texture, which makes the reflections minimal. And it really does a great job. So if you're in a place that you cannot control the reflection, I think you should go with this. If you're in a place where you can control the reflection and everything on your screen, I think you should definitely go with the regular version. The mount is very much like the M1 iMac. It looks up and down very nicely, but of course you cannot adjust the height. So if that's something you want to have, you should go for the other one. One thing that I found interesting is that the cable back here, you cannot detach it. It's, it's not detachable. In the end, I think the balance is restored. Once again, the desktop is more powerful than the laptop. But what excites me the most about M1 Ultra Max Studio is the freedom that it brings. When a device can keep up with my demands, I have the option to push the limits of what I do. I was trying to define what I was feeling while using M1 Ultra Max Studio. It is inspiration. Because with this machine, I'm not looking at a device's limits thinking how far I can push it. Max Studio is looking at me asking what I like to create next. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, I'm very curious about what you think about this product. Is this something you want to get? Is this something you ordered because it sold out so fast? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, leave it down there. Hit subscribe, do that YouTube shenanigans that YouTube is forcing us to do, that YouTube dance. And yeah, I'm probably going to make another video about this machine. So if you have questions, Ask me in the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves. And horse chuckle it!